welcome to Prophetic Dateline. We're here in Dallas, and it's a chunk of ice, yeah, kind it's, of. It's going to get icier. It's going to get icier. Yeah, it's icier, yeah. right? And uh, but but it's warm here in the studio, and and it's going to get hot because who do we have that's going to be on with us? <laughs> we have the very own Chuck Pierce with us, founder wow. and senior <laughs> possible of Glory of wow. Zion. We just assume everybody knows you, Chuck. But I want to tell you, Chuck is an innovator. You know, I mean, he's he is he is one of the few visionaries I know. You have vision, but you really can make it happen. You know how to assemble teams around you, uh, even your family members that still love you after working for you after I'm, all the years. <laughs> <laughs> After all the years, he's an incredible prophet. He uh, is the president of Glory of Zion International Ministries. If you have never been to one of his conferences, you need to go to to Corinth, Texas, to Glory of Zion. Uh, you have a Passover conference. Is it Passover yep. coming up? And you want yeah, to go to that? And we're going to actually, Cindy, we're going to actually be doing eight days. So I'm hoping, I know you're busy, but I hope you and Mike send something so we can promo it one whole night. Because, oh. you know, Passover's eight days and we, right. yeah, we'll we be able to just uh, get the revelation we need to cross over. So all of you out there, you know, this is a wild place. It's a fun place. <laughs> it's a free place. It's a very unique place where uh, actually it is becoming a, a great model for an apostolic center. We go back to where Peter uh, would prophesy about apostolic centers, and I would not have thought God would have made me do one, but that seemed to be the assignment he had for me in this last season. So it is now being used by all the schools, by, by all the cities around us. And we were actually just dubbed as the major place in case a, a disaster happens in any of this area. So, you know, it, it's a good place. So, and yet it's just wild and woolly when we worship. Yeah, and you know, yeah. And so anyway, I, I just want to give a little PR for that. Did you want to say something? Well, not only that. I mean, I was, let's finish the introduction of. Chuck. Okay, wait. I just have to you finish know. saying this. Okay. Anyway, there's beautiful gardens, and I just want to say, some of you have never physically gone and seen Glory of Zion. It's mm -hmm. a massive place, and you want to be there. Now, Chuck has a degree in business from Texas A&M, master's work in cognitive systems. The University of North Texas and a uh, doctorate from Wagner Leadership, now Wagner University, I Wagner should say. University. And he's mm. writing a new perspectives on perspective how to see your future. And he's got many books that you can obtain either from Glory of Zion or Amazon. So, and what I'm going to say yeah. segues right into what we're going to talk about today mm -hmm. because Chuck is one of the few prophets of the many prophets we know that is just spot on accurate with timing. I mean, he would be considered the prototype Issachar prophet. He understands the times and seasons and God gives him revelation of those and then he voices that. And in fact, uh, one of the most recent things that impacts all of us, and as you're looking at the news can see it, Chuck prophesied that we were moving into a season and would it be by this spring, and I think even maybe by April specifically, you said, Chuck, yeah. that that we, there would be uh, an atmosphere of war, and you didn't say it would necessarily be the kind of conflict we're seeing between Russia and Ukraine, but there would be a time of war. So look, can you elaborate on that a little? Well, actually, actually, when I was coming to your gathering there in uh, Cedar uh, Creek uh, over in your area, uh, the Lord spoke to me and he said, kings go to war in spring. Mm -hmm. And I kept pondering. Chad was driving. I think Daniel and Amber were with us. And I kept pondering, saying, Lord, what are you saying? Because anytime I'm with you two, I, I feel like it opens up a portal for me to hear in a way that I don't always hear. You know, because I feel like I feel like I come under 
that, uh, that apostolic prophetic uh, mantle that you have. And so it, it was easy for me to hear that, and I could prophesy. So I went to Mike's second uh, Samuel chapter 11, where David should have gone to war uh, against the uh, Arameans, and he didn't do that. And uh, what it caused when he didn't go to war, and the Lord began to say two things with me, to me. Uh, he began to show me, first of all, that the war would be, uh, and I did think Russia and China, of course, because I have such background with Russia and China starting in the 80s. And I did think Russia. And, uh, but he, the, what the Lord spoke to me was, we cannot be passive starting in spring. Now, that's really what he spoke, that the passivity that has been on the body, that where we've been totally encapsulated with all we've been going through with COVID and everything that's been going on, we had to break out of passivity by spring hmm. as God's people so we could rise up and begin to pray more effectively because of the world conflict. Now, how he showed me the world conflict, and then you guys just pipe in, and, and I, I think I'll get more insight as you discuss things. But he showed it to me because he showed me the harvest sickle in heaven. That sickle was moving in heaven, and it was recreating how the nations were beginning to respond. And see, when heaven starts changing, earth starts changing, governments start changing. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of a sudden, I could see the nations realigning in ways we have not seen them realign historically. I saw Russia. Now, previously, I had written about how Russia would attempt by 2026 to regain all what they had given up mm -hmm. during the dismantling of the old Soviet bloc countries. And so I saw the movement occurring and I really saw how the nations were beginning to make this incredible shift. And we might want to talk about that really with Russia, the Russia-Ukraine incidents, because What's it, that's going to do? That's going to pull America into a place that I'm a little unsettled because of our current administration. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, because it doesn't have the same backbone that is needed to take a stand the way we need to stand in days ahead. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, with the Olympics coming from China, I remember when God just outlined China for me starting in 1986 through 2026. Some of you out there, you have to understand, we are changing so rapidly in the earth that, that uh, we are changing so rapidly in the earth that we will, it will be hard for us to recognize exactly who we are by 2026. Wow. Well, you know, I... I uh, the prophetic council of various members starting 10 years ago prophesied a war with China, or Russia, China, and Iran. And Iran would give oil, you know, that was needed and a lot of things like that. And then uh, I think there was a meeting between um, uh, Russia and China. And, you know, there is some conjecture that that uh, after the Beijing Olympics, just like after, I think, was it the Munich Olympics? Uh, yeah, was, yeah, you know, Munich Olympics. That, that Hitler, uh, you know, went into war, that something could happen in China. We are in a season of war. We are, you know, and, and the, th the thing to realize is that we are not to be afraid but we are to pray like we have never prayed before. We have a prayer army, a massive prayer army in the earth that... that See, I think we're better equipped, Cindy and Mike, than we've ever been. Yeah. I, I think we're, we're more mature. I think when God pulled us aside in March 2020, He, re, he started re, redefining the remnant. 
And that's mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I see what you guys have done to pull uh, key prophetic uh, uh, aligned voices all around the world. And I, I believe we are actually stronger now than what we have ever been. Mm -hmm. we're, we're beyond just a prayer army and we're an apostolic prophetic Judah structure that is ready to decree and go to war. Mm. You know, Cindy, um, it, we were just with Rick Joyner and his roundtable, Chuck, and that has a number of people, some with military background, some with a lot of experience of, uh, in the nations. In, Government, uh, economics. Dip diplomatic type uh, relationships. And, you know, one of the things that, that uh, and because of that, they could almost tell you what's getting ready to happen. And... The thing that always concerns me is if we if we filter what is getting ready to happen through our own grid rather than hearing what God says about what's happening, yeah. then we can yeah. start praying in the wrong direction and actually hinder what God's trying to do in this season. Absolutely, Mike. That is so key to understand that because we have to remember we're a part of the kingdom. We're a nation above all nations. And uh, God's not going to do anything without first telling his prophets. And even though world situations are occurring and aligning, we have to remember this whole decade is about our voice being projected into all of that. And so we have the uh, dimension of decree that is necessary to change what is needs to be changed right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, and I think also, Chuck, like the, the, uh, the graphic that you had of the picture of the lion of the tribe of Judah facing down the dragon and both voices roaring at the same time is so accurate in terms of what we're seeing this season. The thing is, the lion or people who are the body of Christ who are representing the voice of the lion in this season have got to nail it correctly because otherwise you'll end up being in agreement with the dragon. Mike, that is so key. And really, it, it comes from, that picture comes from Revelation 12. Anytime we're in a new era or a brand new season, the dragon rises up. It says it right there in Revelation 12. Because of the new birth that was coming, the dragon rose up and it becomes a three-year crisis. See, we are now actually moving toward that third year of the crisis that we're in. Now, that, that should excite us because, and, and you know, most of us don't see it as an exciting type <laughs> thing. Like Cindy said, it's not a fearful thing because the book of Revelation is becoming more real to us. The book of Daniel is becoming more real to us. And so it becomes important that we press into a depth of the word that we have never pressed in before and that we interpret the world. Cindy used to say this all the time, interpret the world from the word. And that's exactly what you're saying right now. We must interpret the world from the word. Yeah. You know, do, do you have any sensing about... Um... Uh, what's going to happen, you know, in Ukraine. I know the people of Ukraine are really praying. And I know the people of Russia are praying. Mm -hmm. We both are connected oh, totally. with both sides. And I just, I grieve, you know, knowing, you know, uh, we were just crying out last night for, for the people on Ukraine that might be on a kill list. You know, we've heard, yeah. of course, we don't know that there's this kill list. And we were just crying out for God to save, you know. But yet, we so dearly love the Russian church. And I, I feel an internal angst in of myself right now, although I totally am against what's happening in this invasion. You know what I mean? But Well, but we, I, think, I think that's where we have to remember who we are. Uh, now, I, I will say this. We got this last week. And it is a signet ring from the Ukraine. It comes from the Jewish heritage in the Ukraine. It's got the line of the tribe of Judah on it. Now, some way or another, God 
got this to us. It came with Cyrillic alphabet. And he is saying the line of the tribe of Judah is going to rise up in the Ukraine. But with that, we have to remember that there were two nations in all of that Russian uh, structure that uh, were, were really uh, aligned more with Russia, Ukraine, Belarus. And when uh, the Crimean things started happening and all of that started happening uh, back in 2014, all of a sudden Ukraine started saying, we want to be more free. We want to be free. Let my people go. Let my people go. It, we're back to the Bible. That's why it's so easy to understand some of these nations if you'll read it from the standpoint of God's people coming into their promise. And don't, let's forget to talk about that before we end this. But but they're saying uh, we want to align, uh, we want to pull completely out of our alignments with the Russian structure and align more with uh, NATO. Well, uh, you have to admit our, the leadership of Russia is very shrewd. And when I think of Russia, I think of uh, a leadership that is probably more shrewd than any on earth because, of course, working with, with that structure since the 80s. And uh, what, what they're going to begin to do is find territory that can be uh, re-established back to them. In other words, what was given up? You have to think the way the Bible thinks. Seven times stronger. If you don't overthrow the strong man, seven times stronger, it he comes back at you. Now, the Word of God says that. And they're going to start trying to absorb little by little any territory they can absorb and realign it back. See, we're in a season of realignment. Now, all of you listen out there, that's why we have to be realigned properly. Because when we're in a season of alignment, the world's going to start realigning. And Russia's going to start pulling back all of those structures that can realign itself with them. And it will be, I will tell you this, it will be a real war for the Ukraine to uh, realign itself with freedom. Uh, and yet, when we received this ring, I asked the Lion of the tribe of Judah to rise up and begin to roar of the Ukrainian people. See, it's almost like our native people. The Ukraine people were forbidden to ever use their language again. They, they had to be absorbed by Russia. Now they're fighting back to regain their inheritance. Well, we've both written possessing at the gates and possessing your inheritance. You have to war to regain your inheritance. And they are in the war of their life to regain their inheritance. And it's not just a physical war, it's a spiritual war that is so important for you to understand. Now, on the, the thing we can't forget is Russia, that all nations are revolving around their Israeli covenant. I think part of this is a distraction so Russia can establish itself with Iran better and with Syria better so they can target Israel. That's and awesome. because this administration that we're not with that we presently have is not pro-Israel. It puts us in real danger. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think that uh, I just want to say, everyone, I know you're praying out there, but please, you know, call prayer meetings, call for prayer, prayer for pray for Ukraine. I think of, I've been praying for the soldiers. I mean, actually, on both sides, you know, soldiers are both under sides. orders and mm -hmm. under orders. But yet we do not want Ukraine to be absorbed. You know, we, we you know, we want we want to fight. And I I I believe that there was a, a little season of time where we could put a restraining order 
uh, on Putin that they not gobble up all Ukraine. I don't think we're completely past that yet, but I think the door is closing quickly. I, and, I agree fully. I agree and, fully. I, and that is the easiest way to understand it. What's happening is the time frame is getting smaller and smaller. And I, I don't see that we're in full blown conflict right now. And yet it's going to affect us greatly. And what I prayed uh, Sunday was that our, our administration would begin to develop a backbone. Ooh, See, I, yeah. don't, I don't even think we have a backbone sometimes, and I'm not real political and all that. I just want to hear a voice coming forth mm -hmm. from our administration that says, here is where we are and this is where we're headed. Mm -hmm. And if we will make that statement, we'll take a, we'll take a turn toward mm -hmm. the Lord in a whole new way as a nation. If we don't make that statement, we're going to keep drifting as a nation away from God's covenant plan for this land. You know, Chuck, one of the things that uh, maybe just came to me as a thought, I wouldn't say it was necessarily a prophetic word, but that it, some of the things that are happening would tend to give the following scenario. You've got Russia that's been emboldened by the weak administration here. Um, and then you have China, who could very easily take their cue from what happens in how we respond to what Russia is doing and say, well, if Russia's regaining its, its rightful property, we want to get ours back too. So then that they would make a move on Taiwan. Uh, they've already made a move on Hong Kong. And then you look at the Korean Peninsula. And so this, all this stuff is going on. But the third component is Iran. And if they, if they begin to all merge together in this desire to take on property, Iran wants Israel. And totally. if, 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 you know, it's known militarily that if you get uh, armies that are trying to fight on more than one front, it becomes very difficult. But if you add a third front to this, then it's nearly impossible to properly prosecute a war against three different sides. And so I would think that if China makes a move because Russia makes a move, Iran's going to make a move through either themselves or through their proxies to try to take on Israel. Now, let's, let's, let's look a little prophetic, you know, because we, we're sort of prophetic. You, you have had to deal with Cindy and I, and of course you're prophetic, but you, <laughs> we have a different type of prophetic <laughs> gift going on. My, you know, a lot of people wouldn't watch the Olympics because of China's abuse that they have over Christians. Uh, but I felt like I would watch it when the Spirit of God would tell me to watch it so I could see something. Now, I will tell you, there was one incident that was unusual in Olympic history when the Russians uh, ice skating uh, uh, ice skater mm -hmm. uh, ended up testing positive and she was still allowed to perform. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a word from the Lord hmm. that there's a favor that Russia's going to get to be allowed to perform hmm. in days ahead. Now, where that favor is going to come from is how we need to pray. Mm -hmm. Who's going to be extending the favor for Russia to perform what they need to perform to win the gold? Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. that is the word from the Lord. If we can decode that, where the favor is coming, is it coming from China? Is it really coming from the U.S.? Mm, See, it's yeah. coming from one of those two nations, mm -hmm. either China or U.S. that's giving. And that will determine how Russia continues to establish themselves. Because you want to remember the spirit of Cain. Uh, when you read Ezekiel uh, 38, you're going to start seeing uh, how Russia plays out Gog and Magog, the spirit of Cain 
influencing them. I've been to Ukraine several times. I've spoken uh, at several of their stadium events even. And they ha you have to know the spirit of Cain rises up through Russia. That's really where the spirit of Cain operates in its strength is through the nations that are aligned with Russia. And so in latter days, the spirit of Cain begins to try to rule. Well, Cain loved territory and he only loved to give what he wanted to give. And he would not give up, and it opened doors of iniquity. Uh, and the cities that aligned with him prospered. And so we are in one of the greatest moments of realignment worldwide. And I, I, here's what I'm praying. I'm praying that a new generation rise up to see this. You know, we're getting, uh, we're ending uh, uh, an era with uh, approaching our 70s and we're ending an era here and we've seen all sorts of things but there's a new generation that needs to rise up to understand the real war spiritually that is ahead for us yeah you know uh, I, I i i i many of us including myself have been prophesying world war three was on the horizon and we have been praying every time a conflict would arise somewhere in the earth, be it the Arab Spring or whatever it is, uh, to tamp it down. But for the first time, I feel like we may not be able to do that. It, it's time. got some tension that we've never had before, Cindy. I really think that's wise what you're saying there, because if we don't recognize the tension that is going on in the earth right now, we're not going to be able to understand how to pray. And uh, that's what I want to encourage all of you. This isn't a time for any fear. This is a time for new strength. It's a time to turn the battle at the gates. And yet what I call it, I, I, I see it as a different war. I don't see it as a war like we've known in other seasons. Uh, they came out of Egypt and they warred past slavery. At, remember, God got them free, brought them out of Egypt, but then they wouldn't war for their promise. See, what God is saying to us right now I want you to start warring like you've never warred before for your promise, for the inheritance, for where you take your stand and how I will favor you. It's going to take miracles from heaven to favor us, to see things turn. We can't war from down in the earth realm. We've got to be in the heavenlies looking down. And uh, the only thing I can't, it clear is how this threefold cord of world powers are really in clear alignment. Russia, China, and the U.S. How are they really aligning? And is there some hidden force? Now, Daniel had a dream and he shared it Sunday, Daniel Pierce, and Daniel understands world Nation, nations and various things. And he said, in this dream, Russia and the U.S. had a line to go against a, a greater force. Hmm. And as they were doing it, it had been decided that uh, America would take the real lead and take the shot against this enemy that was coming in. Some way or another... He said, in the dream, America was caused to misfire. Mm. And when they misfired, Russia turned on and gained control in a greater way over us. Now, I believe right now that there are so many snares for America in this. And that's what I am praying. Lord, don't let us misfire. Don't let us misfire. Don't let us be even enticed and entangled in this in a way that we can't stay clear in how we see our future. Mm -hmm. And we are in... 
we are in a tremendous war right mm -hmm. now over our future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I so appreciate That's why when you wrote yesterday, I just knew we had to discuss this because mm -hmm. it is the very key thing that I know people are saying, well, all I want to know is how to go get groceries from the grocery store. <laughs> you know, this is all part of it. Mm -hmm. Because China now has supply lines all encapsulated, where we were tearing down that structure two years ago, and now we're back under the control and supply lines are being controlled. I decree right now that there are things beginning to break open and right decrees will start being made. I would say raise up the Cyruses throughout this land to make those decrees that need to be made so that we are not ensnared in a trap that we don't need to be ensnared in. Amen. And I want to, we want to pray for you as we uh, begin to wrap. We want to pray that you will know what to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, for your family. This We just uh, have had meetings where we call Turnaround Tuesdays where the Lord has begun a movement of praying for families, of praying for generations. The hearts of the fathers turn the children, children to the fathers. And, and so we want to pray. And, you know, in the midst of supply shortages, listen, and we prophesied uh, as prophets, uh, supply shortages, they're coming. We even prophesied uh, that there were some states that would see more than others in the U.S. and maybe wherever you are, you know, with the conflicts that are going on now, certainly uh, that we see the people of Ukraine, we, we've got to cry out. We, at this moment, there are trucks driving to Washington, D.C., and the, the, the fencing is back up around the Capitol. And, and I, I heard that 25,000 troops were being sent. And, and we see Canada in turmoil. The nations are in turmoil. They're we in turmoil. See, yeah, we yeah. see Europe uh, in conflict. We see where Europe could be embroiled in a war. And, and, uh, you know, we desperately need a Churchill. You know, Europe, you know, we need these leaders to arise. So I just, Chuck, if you you want to say something, Mike? Well, yeah. That? Yeah, I want to circle back around to something that I think is important here. And that is, Chuck, I know you have had your feet on Russian soil. You have had your feet on uh, the soil of the Ukraine. I don't know if you've necessarily been to Iran or not. But Cindy and I have also had our feet on the soil of both Russia and Ukraine. And it's, it's interesting to me that whenever I am on the soil of a nation like that, I get this deep sensing of God's love for that nation. Absolutely. And, and his love for the destiny that he has for that nation. And there were times in the Bible where other nations had been subdued by a certain enemy and the Lord would send the covenant people of God into war against that power to capture back and to release back the people who had been under oppression from that, that evil force. And it's to that degree, again, if I don't want to ever lose sight of God's love for these nations, Russia, the Ukraine, Right. And, and China, we've yeah. been there. We've had our feet on the soil of China. Oh, God. And he's so he's, involved with the largest church in the world is in China. Yeah, right. and so you've got the body of Christ. If, if we will begin to be, as the covenant people were utilized by God in the past, to begin to break the power of the stronghold that is holding these nations in captivity, then I, I think that may be the most important assignment that we have. God has a destiny for Russia, and it's a good destiny. He has a destiny for the Ukraine, and it's a good destiny. He has a destiny for China, and it's good. So what force is there that is more powerful in the earth than the body of Christ, the kingdom of God, to begin to legislate in the heavens to cause to decree and come to pass the release from captivity of all three of these nations and even Iran. 
Now, let, let me end with this, which will encourage all of you that are listening to us. Here's how the Lord showed it. See, God is interested in people. He's interested in people of faith. People responding to Him by faith. If He came back today, all He's looking for is, will we have faith? The nations are as, as a drop in the bucket to Him. That's what Isaiah says. And so you want to you wanna understand in every nation there's a people that He's looking at that's rising up by faith. Now, this is how the Lord showed it. He showed me that the key is God's prophetic people. He took me to 2 Kings 7 with Elisha where there was such a drought, shortage of food, and Elisha prophesied, this thing's going to change in a day. Well, one of the key officers of that of the nation said, this will not change in, in a day. And Elisha said, you'll see it change in a day. And do you know who believed him? Four lepers believed <laughs> And those four lepers said, we ain't got anything to do. We're just going to die anyway. We might as well jump in on this faith element and believe with what the prophet's saying. And all of a sudden, that thing happened within a day. And things changed, and those lepers became wealthy overnight. <laughs> Now, here's what I want to say to us. God can birth a nation in a day. God can change a nation in a day. And yet, we've got to have that prophetic decree that is so important right now to say, <coughs> how will this shift? I decree right now in America, I'm going to decree it again, we will get a backbone. We will not be ensnared by anything that's going on to pull us into captivity so Russia turns on us and causes a lack of favor to come against us. I decree right now that the Ukraine will rise up and say, we are advancing. Now, I, I want to say this. Putin is going to find a way and Russia is going to find a way to gather certain portions of land from the Ukraine. And the Ukraine is wealthy. It's got, it's got much riches. Cut your, uh, let go of what you need to let go of and then keep what you need to keep and stand and reorder your place of stance right now before the Lord. Ukraine, I know you have had a move of God there. I say to all of you Ukrainians that will hear this, rise up and begin to decree. I say to all of you Russians that have come out from under this structure of uh communist church, I say rise up and decree freedom is coming. And we decree right now nations will begin to submit themselves to the Lord in a new way. And we will watch miracles begin to happen in all of this. Wow. Well, I don't think you could say better than that. Well, there's one other thing that I think is significant, Chuck, and you started with it. God has sent you a signet ring. Signet rings <laughs> were used for many things, but one of the things that they would do is when the king the spirit, made a the proclamation, when the king would write a proclamation, the way you knew it was from the king, they would seal it with the signet ring on hot wax, and that way everyone knew that that was a word from the king. You represent the kingdom of God. All of us represent the kingdom of God. Wouldn't it be wonderful if there were a decree written that, that ties into what you just decreed and prophesied, and let's put the signet to it and set ourselves in agreement with that for what needs to happen. I feel the Spirit of God saying right now, starting around uh, March the 20th, up until nine months from then, we are, God is starting to turn some things to realign nations. We decree right now that just as Esther rose up and gained favor, I decree that Esthers will rise up and gain favor. See, there's something about the Esther right now in these nations. And I decree that they will have strategy for nine months to end up overthrowing structure after structure that's trying to stop 
the next move of God and harvest in the nations. And I decree right now, this signet ring represents the next nine months beginning at Purim for an uprising of faith in God's people, especially in Iran, in Russia, in Ukraine, and we say that there will be a realignment of God's people and the kingdom of God in those lands. Yes, and now we decree over Purim, I think it starts like maybe March 16th of this year, we decree a Purim. We decree, Father God, we speak over the nations, Father God, that there will be a turnaround in a day. Lord, we're asking for these divine turnarounds. Father, we thank you, Lord. The anointing is coming upon the body of Christ to call for turnarounds for Purims. And out of that time is going to come a release of wealth, a release of finance, a release of blessing that is going to be so astounding astounding so i decree over you that esther turn around i decree over you that haman's will fall i decree over you that what the enemy is doing in nations and in your family will boomerang will turn back against the enemy in the name of jesus and you will have promotion and I decree that even though you've been beat down, even though the enemy has tried to take you out with disease like these lepers, the Lord said, I can change it. Say that again, Chuck. Yeah, you froze up, Chuck. I, yeah, I bet the enemy froze that one. Yeah, when, you, when you said <laughs> change. Like these it... lepers who had been beat down, who were on the verge of dying, they said, we don't have a thing to lose. Some of us have gone through such hell over the last three years. We ain't got anything to lose except to decree faith. I say you will jump into this faith river that's coming by your door and faith will arise and you will see a mighty move and ship in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, turn around. We can't do better than that. And just take this apart. Analyze what the Lord is saying. Take it to your prayer meetings and God is going to do a great work. Thank you. God bless you. Till Thanks, next Chuck. time. Thank you, you, Chuck. Guys. Hopefully Love we will see you really soon. <laughs> I think we'll war together to the end. <laughs> I think we will too. Love you. Love All you. Right. God bless well, bye, you. Bye, everybody. Bye, 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 everybody.